All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. The outstanding thing in the new spiritual outlook of today is that we are called on to experiment with this power, to invite this presence, and actually to live as though God were here now. But we should not expect to change our whole mode of thinking in just a moment. Even Jesus grew in grace, and frequently he told his followers that it might take time and effort to bring about the great good that they desired. He said this kind comes out, but by fasting and prayer. And what he meant was that sometimes when we are confronted with great difficulties and seem to be surrounded by confusion, don't even feel well physically. When we are discouraged and distraught, this kind comes out but by fasting and prayer. After carefully going over all these teachings of Jesus, listening to his wisdom again, we cannot help but realize that he is really telling us how to change our mode of thinking, how to set up a new polarity in the mind, which will attract the good that we desire rather than repel it. Jesus seemed to have laid no restriction on the willingness of this power to operate for us, other than that everything we do and say and think should be based in a consciousness of love, in a realization that we must be one with others, even as we are one with God. And this is why he prayed that they might be one, even as we are one. The training of the mind to think differently and to think affirmatively is simple enough, but I wouldn't say that it is very easy, for a thing can be simple without being easy. And again, this is where faith must be used faith in a power greater than we are, based on the firm conviction that we live in a divine presence which wishes us only good, and that God has intended that every man should be well and happy and successful. Common sense should teach us that we did not create the universe, nor need we be responsible for the laws of good or nature or God. All that we can do is to use them, but perhaps we have been using them wrongly in our ignorance. Now we are called on to re-educate our minds, to reform our thinking, to make a complete and final surrender of all our littleness and fears and our doubts and our uncertainties to that great big something within us that is always calm and certain and sure. That's something, perhaps, that has never really left its divine kingdom, even though our minds have become so confused, so unhappy, and so full of fear. And this is the great challenge. It is also the great adventure, the adventure of faith in a power greater than we are, the challenge of a love that abides forever. Let us say then, in the quiet of my mind, I realize that I am one with the eternal newness of life. All that spirit is creates in and through me now, and my body is alive with the life of God. My body is filled with the light of God. There is no darkness or discouragement, no despair or defeat. My mind is refreshed in that one mind that eternally gives of itself to its creation. All that the Father hath is mine. I open my heart to accept the good gifts of life, the gifts of joy and happiness, of enthusiasm, right here and now. And I open my heart to know that that which is forever ageless is the source of my being. I decree that my body and my experience shall reflect the image of life in all of its newness, and I shall sing and dance through the days of my years with gladness in my heart. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, knowing that my cup is full to overflowing with the only life there is, 
the life and the love and the eternal youth of God.